Okay, so what I'm going to demonstrate here is just the drain plug for the coolant on the block. Now, we could do this in the car, but access is difficult. That's the plug here. It's a spark plug side socket, 21 mil AF, and it could be quite tight, so I'm using a breaker bar. Just break, crack it off, and then a drain bucket. You could turn the engine mount out of the way slightly, undo the plug, and let the water coolant come out. What we're going to be doing is taking the cylinder head off with the car in place, with the engine here on the floor, uh, and then we'll put it, once we've done that, the head will go back on and we'll put the engine gearbox up on the hoist and then we'll split the engine from the gearbox and sort out the clutch. Whilst it's also, also on the floor, we'll take off the timing cover and have a look at the timing components. I think we'll probably do that next. As you can see, this coolant is pretty horrible. It's probably got mixed with oil because we have this suspected head gasket failure. And I'm just looking around the other components just to see if there's any other issues. You can do a cylinder head change in situ. It's a bit more tricky, uh, but it can be done. Uh, and of course, I'm making a mess now, but that's what happens. Uh, but it's far easier with the engine out uh, to do the head gasket um, you know, with the car engine out of the car. So, removing the exhaust manifold and downpipe as a unit off the engine, uh, it's very awkward to get at these nuts. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack them off with a large uh, 3 8 drive socket just to make sure that they're actually loose and then I'm going to remove them with a small 8th drive socket That's because that gives enough clearance to get over the top of this pipe. It hasn't been... The, this design, I take it, was an iteration from Citroen, which is why they've ended up with it slightly not working. So an 8th drive socket with a thinner shaft allows easier access to the nuts as you undo them. When I put the exhaust panel back on, I'm going to use copper nuts rather than the steel ones. And you see, this is what happens, <laughs> is that the stud is coming out with the nut, and therefore my socket is being trapped. So, I'll, luckily I can get this one by hand. It's being very slow. Doesn't seem to want to come out. Ah, nope. It is the nut, so it's half come undone and it's half come off, typical. Anyway, right, so. Uh, not bothered about dropping the nuts. I don't know if these might well be stainless steel nuts. And again, the problem here is that as the stud comes out, it traps the socket. You can grind the uh, grind the socket to suit to give you an extra bit of extra clearance. This is sort of slightly typical in that the nut comes out halfway and then the stud comes out halfway but that's better than actually having a sheared off stud, which can be a real pain. This end one here, being extra long, I'm going to use a deep socket. And also the one in number one is the same. Okay. The last nut. <laughs> and the whole exhaust manifold will just slide off the studs with a bit of help. And there we have it. Look at the gaskets. This one was possibly slightly blowing. These two are okay.
while I'm at it, I'll take the gaskets off. That was on the point of failure, this one, but it was still working. This one was fine, sealing okay, but you will not reuse the exhaust gaskets. That one also getting to the point of failure. Not quite leaking, but was on the way. And we've got a couple of loose studs, which I'll put back in later. But overall, this is in not bad condition. I'm going to be taking off the exhaust manifold, sorry, the inlet manifold, complete with the carburetor and the CRC, um, because they're all fine. Uh, but in order to do that, I just need to disconnect several things. So first of all, we'll take off this breather pipe. It's a uh, oh, it's damaged breather pipe anyway, so we will be definitely replacing that because it's actually split. And that shows how old it is. All right, then we have a coolant pipe which attaches to the underside of the inlet manifold and goes around up to the front of the coolant pump. We will be replacing this pipe as well. This is another pipe that is very awkward. There will be some spillage of coolant. Very awkward to change this when it's in the car and a lot easier than when it's not. So hence we will take the uh, advantage and do it now. So the CRC, I'm just going to release the pipes on the side of the CRC. They'll come off later. And once again, there's, every time you have a, a, a union with a, like this, with a bracket with several pipes, there will be a sandwich plate with O-ring seals in it, which again, we will be changing as a matter of course. So there's the O-rings on this one, slightly larger than the ones on the other sandwich plates. Okay, that is now all free. Now I can slacken off all the nuts, I'll remove the nuts to hold the inlet manifold on. Again, this is possible in the car, but access is extremely restricted when it's in the car. You'll note there's no washers on the back of these nuts. They just go straight plain onto the aluminium. Okay. Final one. Here we go. Now, with a bit of a wiggle, that should just come off, and it does. Again, there might be a little bit of coolant loss as there's coolant in the unit manifold. And there it is. All looks quite good. Gaskets doing their job, not an issue. Fine. <sighs> right. Okay, so I'm now going to remove the distributor and this coolant pipe as I slowly work my way to get the head off. I'm going to take the distributor straight out with its clamp as a unit so that we don't disturb the timing. Now I've already taken the cap off and I'll just lift this up as I undo the nut. There is a certain amount of latitude as you can see on this main clamp which gives you a little bit of adjustment timing just to fine tune it but as it was set in the middle that's fine. Now it should just pop out, there we go. 
Now the coolant pipe. Looks like it's already been slackened off. We will be changing this pipe as a matter of course. It's possibly the original one, not quite sure. But they generally go very stiff. There we are, it's a little bit corroded around this end. It's just old, old and worthwhile replacing it. Now, the next bit is this little pipe here. This is the oil feed from the cylinder block to the, to the head. It's what feeds the rockers and all the valves. And it's the only external oil feed there is. And it's got a little banjo bolt. You can't see it because it's all dirty, but it's also got a little copper double-sided washer, which seals this little pipe to the head. It's far always too easy to it's too easy to forget this particular bolt and then you try and get the head off and it's still attached. Now you see it's a little, it's a hollow drilled bolt which allows the oil feed through into it and into the head. And this is the copper, double-sided copper washer, a bit dirty, but we'll be replacing that or annealing it in, in due course. I can leave that pipe in place because it's attached to the block, the head will be lifting up around it. Right, the next thing that needs to come off is this is the lead for the starter motor and it's actually been attached to one of the bolts that hold the water pump on. So I'm just going to undo and remove it. And once I've done this, I've got the pipe, the bracket off and that can fold down the starter motor. So the cylinder head is now disconnected all round externally and now we can take off the rocker cover and start getting into the main head bolts to remove the head. Right, so now I'm going to take off the rocker cover and first of all we've got this uh, HT lead support on this side which has got a long stud and it also secures the wire that holds the uh, oil filler cap. And whilst we're at it, let's have a quick look. Right, that is not what you want to see. This is the, this is the reason why we're going to take the cylinder head off. This milky oil and water mix, this is the first place it'll end up, which is the top of the, top of the rocker cover. And that is indicative that we have a, a head gasket issue, i.e. coolant and oil are mixing, which is why we're doing this job. We'll clean all that out, of course, before it goes back on. Cleaning being one of the major things that you do when you're rebuilding anything. A lot of cleaning has to take place. I'll just slacken that off so that I can get to the bolt underneath, which of course is a different size. 12 mil. So this stud, I'm quite happy to take it off with all the the bracketry so attached to it and as you'll see in a minute there should be a copper washer under it which there isn't in this instance but there will be when it goes back together oh there is sorry I beg your pardon there is a copper washer there it is we'll take the cap off just for a moment and we'll now undo this bolt This is quite a nice shiny rock cover. Someone's taken the time to polish it, which is quite nice. Okay, slacken off the loosen off the rock cover. There we go. And the gasket's coming with it. And once again, there is evidence of emulsion with the oil in the top of the rock cover, all looking rather horrible and gooey. That will all be cleaned up, not a problem. So now we have the valve gear exposed. First of all, I'm going to take out these. These are the seals again. These little row seals seal the top of the rock cover from the uh, spark plug well. And there's a metal steel washer that base supports it. So there's four of those. And we might well change those again as a matter of course, depending on how 
how stiff they are. Right. The next operation is to remove the exhaust rockers each. Uh, they're individual, whereas the inlet rocker shaft, as you see, is one piece and is fixed down with, goes through the head bolts. So I'm going to take off each exhaust rocker in turn and keep it together with all its components as a, as a set. Now it's being forced up by the valve spring because this particular valve was open at that point. And you'll note that there are two extended studs rather than nuts, which are the ones that hold the rocker cover down. And again, they can only go in those particular positions. So once you've got the nut and removed the stud, the whole lot will slide off together as one. And while you're at it, you could take out the push rod, which doesn't want to come out for some reason. That's interesting. We'll leave that in place. Come back to that later. Okay, so that's one. And on to the next one. So working from front to back, number one cylinder, number two cylinder, number three cylinder, etc. You can then keep everything in order. on the bench so that it goes back into the same position when you rebuild it. Okay, there we go. And number four. Oops. Drops his panner, very unprofessional. We'll examine all these components later. But I'm keen to get to the cylinder head. Right, so I could have done this earlier. I'm now going to take the spark plugs out. Okay, we're now ready to undo all the head bolts and there is a sequence which we will adhere to. It's usually more important when you're doing the head bolts up but we'll still adhere to the sequence undoing them. So the basic plan is you start from the inside and you go in a spiral outwards. That's the sequence. So we start with number bolt in, number one in the middle. I'm just going to crack it off you can hear it making noise. And then while Ian's coughing, I'll just keep going. Crack off second, third, fourth. Want to be a little bit gentle. Sometimes you can shear head bolts, particularly the ones, these ones here on the exhaust side, because they are prone to corrosion and also heat because they're on the exhaust side. little bit stiff. Okay, so now they're cracked off. We can just undo them a bit faster. So you've got two lengths of head bolts on the DS engine. You've got long ones that all go through the rocker shaft and they are generally have no problems because they're they're running in oil there's oil going up the middle of the rocker shaft feeding all the rockers but the ones on the exhaust side here don't go through oil that one looks rest, rest relatively okay but these are slightly stiffer on the exhaust side We could, in fact, go to the windy gun and just 
blast them out. I think that's now stuck in corrosion. Hard work keeps you fit. So these should be no problem at all. Okay. They're all out. Now, it's a relatively complicated rocker shaft because it also incorporates these towers which support the exhaust rockers. But the whole thing has to come out as a unit. The only thing that's loose is this support at this end. So the whole thing has to be lifted up with the exhaust rocker supports, like that. This one's not out yet. And the whole thing will come out as a unit. There you go. Park it on the bench. Mm -hmm. This is the end one. Now this is specific. You'll see it's got a, a cutout a flat on one side that, so that when that goes in place, it clears the rocker, uh, sorry, the push rod. So now the push rods should come out and again, we're going to keep them in order. This one is problematic, it doesn't want to come out. That tells me there's a problem further down, which we'll look at later. So that's interesting, one doesn't want to come out. That one has come out okay. Ah, we have another possible problem. So there's obviously an issue probably with the with the tappets, which we'll find once we get down into them. So remove the remaining bolts. partially seized. I can't tell whether the, they should be out of the thread, but they're not coming up anymore. Okay, I'm going to assume, apart from that one perhaps, well the good news is that they've all actually undone, none of them are actually sheared off, although these are quite stiff, far stiffer than they should be. It's quite normal to find that on an old engine. This corrosion tends to make the bolts either seize into the head That one's coming now. There we go. Let's see what we see on this one. I thought it was out. Yeah, there's quite a lot of corrosion on that. That one is pretty sure that's out. It's just going around. There we go. Looks like it comes out further than you think. And that one doesn't doesn't want to come out. That's just going round. And that one is should now be out as well.
Okay. Bit of hard work, but never killed anybody. Right, we're now ready to pull the head off. So it's, there's a couple of dowels, little dowel on this end, so it might be slightly sticky. So I'm just going to lift it up from the water pump end just to free it off. That's nice and free. And what I'll do is I'll put it down on the floor here so we can have a look at it as I take it off. I'll take it off and flip it over. Okay, here we go. Uh, I feel something still slightly attached. Just those wires, right? There we go. And there we have it. Okay, on first inspection, door looks quite nice. Bit of corrosion on the head bolts. And then looking at the head gasket, which is of course what we suspect we have failure. Let's have a look. This is a, not a good area here. You can see where it's quite blackened. What you're looking for is a clean uh, ceiling face. It's very thin here. It's a little weak here. Every time it's, if it's blackened, you've got gas flow. And again here, what you're looking for is a nice clean face like that, but all the way around. So all of these we'd say are compromised, shall we say. So the head gasket has definitely had its, done its time. The next thing I want to look at is the bores. And looking at this, I can still see honing marks, which is good. And I'm also feeling for a lip where the top ring gets to its uppermost point and generally tends to wear the bore. And these feel quite good, i.e. there's not much of a lip. So the good news is that all the tappets are in pretty good nick. So again, indicative that this engine has been looked after and this is probably the original head gasket and so the mileage might well be genuine in being a low mileage car. The other good thing about seeing tappets in good condition is that it means that the camshaft itself will not be worn because as soon as you have a worn face on a tappet it'll wear the lobe of the cam and then your, your camshaft is worn out and that is a much bigger job to change. Now we're ready to put the cylinder head uh, back onto the engine. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the safety bolts that I was put in just to hold the um, liners in place. Now we have already done a lot of the donkey work, i.e. cleaning up this face very carefully. All of the thread bolts have been cleaned out thoroughly and chased with a tap, so we know they're all fine. And we've also checked out all of the uh, cam followers. We've changed one because it was just slightly going. But overall, I'm very happy with what we've got left. The head has now been cleaned up and I've reseated all the valves and put new valve stem seals and rebuilt all that. So it's now purely down to just dropping it all, putting it all together. New head gasket can only go on one way because you've got a little dowel at this corner. You can't put it in upside down or you can try and then you'll find it's the wrong shape. So at the end that helps. So you've got a dowel there and one in the middle, just there. So that locates the cylinder head, sorry, the gasket. And now the head, obviously lovely, beautifully cleaned and all checked out and fine. And again, it has to go on to those two dowels, which when you're doing it from above, you can't actually see what you're doing. We can just do a little bit of, hopefully, there we go. Just drops in nicely and it, you can't move it. Then I'm going to put in all nine of the short head bolts, which are on the exhaust side. Again, previously cleaned, made sure all the threads are okay and that they're all acceptably usable. And I'm just going to run these up just to uh, lightly nip the head before moving on to putting on the, all the push rods and then putting in the rocker shaft. So this just gets us into a position where the head is then secure on the block for the time being uh, before we do the rock shaft and push rods 
And then of course, once we've talked it all down, we then have to set the valve clearances. So there we are, that's them all just lightly nipped. So the head's not going anywhere. And now I'll have to go and get the, the push rods. So the cylinder head is in place and is lightly bolted with the short bolts on the exhaust side. I'm now going to put in the push rods before we put in the rocker shaft. Now the push rods are going back into exactly the same positions that they came out of when I took the engine apart which is always good practice. And there they are. Right, now the rocker shaft assembly. It's been in the wash tank for a quick clean. It's in generally in very good condition. I'm not going to dismantle it any further. But what we do need to change is there is a series of O-rings, which I'll see if I can pick out, which have all gone hard because they do over time. So O-ring oil seals, which go round each of the each of the head bolts bar one and of course being awkward it doesn't want to come out of course try another tool now in the head gasket set that we've got that you can buy the, these new o-rings new o-rings replacements come with the set and it's being a particularly recalcitrant and i'm trying not to stab myself because that wouldn't be good and here we can see that the O-ring is almost so hard that you can actually just bend it and break it. So I need to do that with all of them. Um, what I'll do is I'll just demonstrate the new O-ring, which is lovely and pliable. We'll just go over the thread of the bolt. And this is part, once it's, once it's in place, it stops this, stops this thing coming apart. So hence you're back to a, a, a an assembly that doesn't really come apart. It's all a bit loose, but it won't actually fall off because the O-rings stop, stop it coming apart. So I need to do, get all of the O-rings out of all the other ones before we can uh, proceed. Right, now the rocker shaft assembly, which is a rather gangly and rather awkward piece of kit to get this assembled in. You've got to get all of the bolts and everything in all at the same time, which of course is an impossibility. This end uh, pillar has got, got a chamfer on it, which um, allows clearance for the push rod, and it's the only loose part. We can rotate that later. But trying to get all of these all into the same, all into their respective holes at the same time is a bit of a faff. So you will be watching me struggling for some time and then of course it just drops in perfectly yes a uh, little trick when assembling one of these is to use this collar on each of the bolts turn it through 90 degrees to hold the spring away from the um, pillar and this helps in the assembly process because otherwise the, sp the springs and washers tend to catch your fingers and it's a bit of a faff really. Also I'm going to just seat the rockers onto the push rods if I can at each one. And I've got this one completely upside down that's not very helpful. There we go. Uh, It's all a little bit tricky. That's not too bad. And now we can just get the bolts to start. Yep, that's sort of going in the right direction. Just a point to note is that at this end of the rocket shaft, you'll see that the, the, uh, there's a wa larger thick washer, which is a spacer at this end. That's quite important to ensure that it's in the right place because it positions the rocker uh, so that such that it's touching the valve in the right position. It's quite easy for you, because this bolt will come out, quite easy to have that lost, um, but it is 
vital that it goes back in the right place. Right, I've got an issue somewhere, and this isn't wanting to go down. And it's usually one of these washers that separates the spring from the, from the post is catching. There we go, and once they're all clear, it will then drop down and fit. Okay, now I think I can just start to tighten the bolts up. Again, this is popped out of line. Just to get them all started. And once again, we're only going to do them up very lightly, all of them lightly, to start off with. Because it's very easy to catch things and make them not be in the right position. You can see just right at the last minute, I'll turn that 300 degrees and make it sit where it should do. And the end one is also, I will do that for the end one. <laughs> A little bit too, too, too keen. Come on, turn around. <laughs> there we go. That one's in place and I may as well turn this end one over as well. So once you got to this stage, you just need to check that the rockers are all sitting on their push rods, which they are, and you can then just knit these up hand tight. So everything is as it should be. And I'm now ready to uh, torque the head down before I put on the exhaust rockers. So now all the head bolts are in and they're just hand tight. I'm now going to torque them up. Now we'll do them, there's two things. First of all, there's two stages where we torque the head bolts, uh, sort of half and then full. The first one is to 30 Newton meters and the final setting will be 65 Newton meters. The other thing we need to know is that there's a sequence of tightening the head bolts. You essentially start at the middle and work your way around and out in a, what we call a snail cam, so it gets larger. So that's, that's the essential process. You would do it the same on all the most other cylinder heads. So I've already set the torque wrench to 30 Newton meters, which is a low setting. Start at head, head bolt number one. And as soon as the uh, torque wrench clicks down, we can move on to the next bolt. There we go. This is number three. There we are, they're all done up to 30 newton meters. Now I'll reset the torque wrench and repeat the process. This of course will require a little bit more effort. But you want to be smooth in bringing it up to torque, don't try and snatch it. There we go. This then pulls the cylinder down evenly and ensures that we have a we don't distort the head as we bolt it, bolt it down, thereby ensuring we have a good quality seal. After about 500 miles, once you've run the engine for a bit, it's good practice, and specified by these engines, to re torque the head bolts after about 500 miles or several heat cycles, because the new gasket will have relieved slightly. And the process is 
with the well, engine will be in the car, obviously, is to go through the same sequence, slacken off each bolt in turn, and then do it up to the uh, final torque, and you'll find that you'll get another perhaps quarter of a turn on each bolt as it comes up to torque. And you'll then have to reset the valve clearances once you've done that. I'm just going to go over the a final double check just to see if that one wanted to give a little bit there. Which, oh, I think I've done them slightly the wrong sequence, but hey. I think I've already done that one. And that one. Okay, there we are. Heads now talked down. So I'm now going to fit the exhaust rockers and again I've left them in the assembly when we took them off and they're all in good condition so I'm just going to put them straight back on into the same relative positions. Again we line up the push rods onto the top of the rocker and just help it in place and put all these little bits on and then I just spin it on. So I'll just do each of these in turn. Now this one is actually opening the valve because obviously the camshaft is at a certain point whereby the valve is open. I have it set so that uh, it's number one TDC for timing purposes. And so it, at any one point, one of the valves, at least one of the valves is going to be open. Okay. And again, probably this one as well feels like it. And the final one. Deciding to be a little bit tricky. Okay, that's all the exhaust rockers on. Now we're at the position where we need to set the valve clearances, which will require us to turn the engine over. 
which means that we're going to be using the starting handle on the end of the gearbox. So here I'm going to explain how to adjust the valve clearance on the DS. And there are a couple of methods of doing it, uh, patterns if you like. And my preferred pattern is to uh, watch the exhaust valves on this case. And when one of the exhaust valves is fully open, uh, you can then adjust two others, knowing because they're, they're known to be uh, the right point at which you can adjust them. So the first one I'm going to watch fully closed, fully open, sorry, is the number one cylinder here. So I'm going to turn the engine on the crank handle, watching the valve open. There you go. And we're now fully open. So with number one fully open, the sequence is the same as the firing order. So this is still in number one. So we go one, three, four, two, which is the firing order. So as I've got the exhaust fully open, I now know that I can adjust number three inlet and number four exhaust. Hence, one, three, four, two, that firing order. So that is the way I'm going to do it. So I can feel I've got, clear, I've got clearance there and I've got clearance here. So I'm now going to adjust number three inlet here. So I put my spanner on the lock nut and I, the engine's cold and the clearance I'm using is uh, six thou or 0.15 millimeters. So we slide that in there slacken the lock nut and hold the screw and I can then slacken or tighten the screw just so I get slight more resistance than I want on the feeder gauge and then lock up the screw and have another test that's still slightly slack from what I like it's a little bit of trial and error to get just the right amount of clearance hence I suppose the term feeder gauges really. So and lock that up. Don't doesn't have to be too tight, but just enough so it's not going to move the uh, the adjuster. There we are. That's a nice feel. So that's that one done. The next one I'm going to do in this sequence is number four exhaust. Same procedure, but this time we have an eight thou feeler feeler gauge because the exhaust is a larger clearance. And um, I'm trying to remember what eight thou is in metric. Uh, there we are, it's 0.2, there we go. I should know that, of course. Uh, so again, once again, crack the lock nut off, put the feeler gauge in, and tighten up the, in this case, tightening up the screw to get the right level of clearance. And then, whilst resisting turning of the screw, tighten the lock nut. Again, that's just a nice sliding clearance with a little bit of resistance. That's it, and now we move on to the next two, which requires me to turn the engine over again. So oh, you only need to turn it over half turn. We're, we're starting here with number exhaust, the exhaust on number one. So the next one that will uh, open will be number three. So I'm watching the valve getting fully open. We're about there. And so now the firing order being one, three, four, two. We now know that the next ones to adjust are number four inlet, which is this one, and number two exhaust, which is this one. So once again, six thou feeler, slacken the lock nut. And wiggling the feeler gauge until we just get a little bit more resistance than we want. Tighten up the lock nut, double check, that's slightly, you'll find that it's things slightly slacken or tighten off by tiny incremental amounts. And again, practice here makes perfect. That's, again, that's, that's acceptable. So now we go to number two, which is quite slack. Get the right size. Okay, that's that one done. Now turn the engine over again, another half turn. And this time we should get number four exhaust valve to open. There's the exhaust valve opening. 
and we're pretty much on full lift. So once again, sequence being one, three, four, two. So one, three, four is open. So two inlet and one exhaust are the two to adjust. So this is number two inlet. bit too tight there. A little bit too slack there. A little bit just right there. Okay. Eighth hour feeder into number four, number one exhaust. And lock it up. Yep, that's fine. And another half turn. And that's the number two valve, exhaust valve fully open. So firing order one, three, four, two. So the next one would be one inlet, which is too tight, and three exhaust. Once again, slacken off the lock nut. Insert feeler gauge. And set clearance. Yep, that's pretty good. And number three, exhaust. That's a bit more. There we go, how's that feel? It's a little tight. I want to back it off just a smidgen. And now it's a little loose. It is really a very fine adjustment to get it just right. Yeah, that's lovely. Okay, job done. Right, we're now at the point where we're going to put the rocker cover on, but first we're going to change the spark plug well, spark plug tube gaskets. And in the in the gasket set we've got, each of them comes it's a square section rubber tube as you can see, rubber O-ring, but they've got the metal backup ring which sits onto a ridge on the spark plug tube, prevents it going down any further. There we go. All nice new components. And this one's going to be stiff, of course. There we go. And just before I put the rocker cover on, I'm going to add a little bit of early oil, which is using my oil can. I'm just going to squirt oil into each of the rockers through the uh, oil hole. Again, this is just extra lubrication for the fresh start up when we're starting up a bone dry engine. No harm with having a little bit of lubrication where it's needed. There we go. Right. So we now have the lovely clean rocker cover and we take the new gasket which as you can see is shaped. It can only go on one way which we'll put on. Here we go, over the ridge. And as it's the engine's all off, it can only go on one way. Very nice and easy. 
And we've got two bolts holding the rocker cover on. We put the new copper washers that came with the kit. You'll see the extended bolt goes nearer the, the uh, filler tube because this will support the um, clamp that holds the HT leads and the other end is just a straightforward bolt. Again with the copper washer. Because this is providing a seal, an oil seal, to stop oil coming out. Now these need to be down, these need to be tightened reasonably tightly, yeah, sli i.e. slightly more than just um, finger tight, because you're compressing the gasket all around the bottom of the rocker cover and also each of the four individual spark plug well seals. If these aren't done, done up tight or you have a leak, you can get oil coming up around the uh, spark plug well and going down into the spark plug and soaking the spark plug, which can then lead to a misfire. So once those are nipped, which they are, that's fine. Now we're at the point where we can put the spark plugs back in. These are Iridium spark plugs that came out. They've already got the extension on them. So they were all absolutely fine. In goes spark plug number two number three and number four and using my special citron tool which I'll mention again has got a ridge a ring around the top of the spark plug uh, socket such that it centralizes the tool and prevents you getting a cross thread in your spark plug which you really don't want so again I'm just going to do these up finger tight to start off with and then you really need an eighth of a turn once they've bottomed out. You don't want to really over tighten them because it would make life really difficult when you're trying to take them out. And it's probably you that's going to be taking them out anyway. There we go. So why not make your life easy in the long run? There we go. Now I'm going to put in the insulators sugar snaps or just insulating tubes, just pop them in. And the final thing to go on here is the oil filler cap, which in this instance, if you remember at the beginning of this video, was one of the first things we looked at because it was full of a mayonnaise type stuff, which is the combination of oil and water mix. It's now just wiped it out. That pops on there and it is secured onto this tower here on the thread. It's going to be quite awkward. I want to put it all the way down to the bottom. And the next thing to go onto that tower is the spot, is the HT lead tidy, which is then secured in place with a straightforward nut. So now we're at the point where we can put on either of the exhaust or the inlet manifolds onto the head. And then laterally the distributor and distributor cap and therefore seal up these plug holes. So there we go. So we're about to put the inlet manifold on, but the first thing I need to do is to put this little banjo bolt, the old feed pipe, which is We've got a hole down the middle of it and the new copper washer. It's a special double sided copper washer that just goes around the end of the bolt of the pipe and then ease it into position. Now because this is a drilled hollow bolt it doesn't want to be very tight at all before you reach the point at which it will actually shear. So all you're doing is nipping it up onto the copper and then a little bit more. No doubt there's a caption at the bottom of the screen now telling you what the torque figure should be. Now we're going on to put the new gaskets onto the studs for the inlet manifold. And they're quite self-evident what shape they are. All nice and straightforward. I could also say that we've already previously cleaned the faces and also cleaned the manifold. So all the drudgery work has been done. And now we just align the complete manifold up. We haven't bothered taking the carburetor or the CRC off because it was all fine. And now it's just a question of getting 
the nuts on the bolts. You will note that I'm not putting any washers uh, and I'm going to stop there because I think I want to put these gaskets in, in the right orientation. I'll just turn them over. Here we go. Almost like I knew what I was doing. Here we go. I'll repeat the procedure. On goes the manifold onto the studs and then put the nuts on. Now in this case, all of these nuts go straight on. They don't have any washers behind them. This is how Citroen did it, so hey-ho. We shall follow suit. And pretty much, I can't think of any time I've had a, an inlet manifold gasket failure. So obviously the system works fine. Eight nuts in all. Some are going to be slightly more awkward because I haven't taken some of the parts off, but again, not too difficult. Saving us quite a bit of time when it comes to the reassembly. Again, I can't see that one. There. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to nip them up now that they're all on. <laughs> Come on, socket. Stay with me. And a final check. And the manifold is on.